Um, I mean, like a philosopher selling out the O2. Yeah, was it sold out? Uh, almost, not yeah. quite. There were some empty seats. It, as soon as I saw this advertised, God, a few months ago now, I was like, this is absolutely fascinating. What on earth is going on? Who's going to turn up to see Jordan Peterson at the O2? Will it be sold out? Does it work? A guy giving a talk to a like 20,000 seat arena? Um, what's he going to say? And it was, yeah, duly about... Well, actually, I think more weird than I expected. It was a really odd event. But what I found so fascinating is you said 40% of the people there were women. Yes. Well, this is a kind of misogynistic mumbo-jumbo, extraordinary to me that so many women would go. And they had no women on the platform whatsoever, as far as I can work it was, out. It was really interesting. And it just him? No, so he did it. He did. He did a kind of introductory talk. Then there was a panel which he chaired, which was absolutely terrible because all, he's, men. all he could do was talk himself. And the whole panel were men. Yeah. Yeah. So it was wow. him. Okay. Who was it? it? Was him, Douglas Murray, um, Bjorn Lomborg, this kind of climate mm -hmm. skeptic, and Jonathan Pag Pajot, I think. I think his name is pronounced. Who is a carver of uh, Russian Orthodox icons and a YouTube celebrity. <laughs> and yeah, the whole the whole vibe was very weird. It was interesting because it certainly sort of, I don't know, in a slightly disturbing way, kind of disrupted some of my prejudices. Because I think the stereotype people have about Jordan Peterson is that it's all for, you know, there's a kind of negative stereotype that it's all for, like, incels and weird, kind of isolated, slightly dangerous young men. And the thing that really struck me about the crowd was how kind of normy in internet slang it was, like a lot of very normal people. And yeah, how female. I was asking everyone, what do you reckon the kind of gender ratio is here? And the standard guess was sort of 60-40. And I think He's got so many aspects to him. There's the kind of political anti-woke stuff. There's the kind of put your shoulders up straight and get your life together lifestyle stuff. So I think people are probably there for different reasons. And, you know, everyone's getting things slightly different out of him. Um, Libby, you must in your time of, uh, of uh, theatre reviewing gone, 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 gone all excited about going to see something and then been bitterly disappointed. Well, the thing is, you yes, there are sometimes disappointments, but the point about being a critic or indeed a journalist like James Merritt is if you've got a notebook on your lap, you know, you have, you're always excited by the intellectual exercise of working out why this thing is so bad, you know, so that even a bad play can actually be quite exciting. But what I, I liked about this, I, I loved um, James's suggestion that there's a very thin line between Jordan Peterson and Gwyneth Paltrow in this <laughs> business of, you know, change your life, <clears throat> change your life and be different. Because uh, it's all a bit Billy Graham-ish. And in, in my experience, it's very rarely, and among that of people I know, it's very rarely a sort of Billy Graham-ish extreme sermon which changes people's minds. It's often one small line privately found in a book or heard in a speech or the example of someone who seems to you to have their life and ethics sorted and you'd rather be more like them. The, the, the fires of big sort of public event excitement burn out very quickly, but real lives get changed by all sorts of small mm. things which you know maybe people don't even mention because they don't want to be boring evangelists themselves so I, I just I don't think these things ever work but I'm sure it was interesting and I mean James writes wonderfully about it I have to say though he had more fun in Paris the other week <laughs> <laughs> I suppose James there's an interesting thing about the rise of spoken word events ideas based you know, whether it's old centrist dads, Alistair Campbell and Maury Stewart, at, you know, selling out the Royal Albert Hall or or Jordan Peterson at the O2. The, maybe it's the it's maybe it is the, the podcastization of Absolutely. People. And this is something that I think I was kind of chiding myself when I turned up to this for how if you work in a newspaper, you can still stay in that mindset that's all about people writing columns and articles and stuff. And, you know, one hopes that columnists are the centre of the world. But I, I, it's not true at all. You know, talking to everybody in the crowd, who did they like? There's a whole universe of, I guess, these kind of strange alt-right celebrities, people like Peterson, people like Ben Shapiro. And, you know, I... I I think for a lot of people, they're not reading, you know, newspapers at all in the, mm. traditional, in the traditional way we'd once have thought. It's this, that might be in the background. In the foreground is this other universe of yeah. YouTube celebrities. 